From across the globe, delegates gathered in the United Nations General Assembly Hall with a single goal, banning nuclear weapons worldwide. The doomsday clock indicating how close the humanity is to global catastrophe has been set at 2.5 minutes to midnight, worst since 1953, worse than any other time, even at the height of the Cold War. UN ambassadors agreed to hold the conference in response to what they called stalled programs on nuclear disarmament in recent years. Among their concerns, efforts by the U.S. and Russia to modernize their nuclear arsenals, as well as suggestions they might try to add more warheads, not cut the number. However, the nuclear states and their allies are boycotting these talks, some 40 countries in all. They're pointing to current global instability and threats from countries such as Iran and North Korea. But in this day and time, we can't honestly say that we can protect our people by allowing the bad actors to have them and those of us that are good trying to keep peace and safety not to have them. Another objection. The treaty could undermine the negotiations regime already required by the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, or NPT. A step-by-step -step approach to global nuclear disarmament is what we need to build trust and confidence. It will provide for tangible steps towards a safer and a more stable world where countries with nuclear weapons feel able to relinquish them. Both diplomats at the conference and non-proliferation activists are dismissing the complaints from the U.S., the U.K., and other nuclear states. As one diplomat told the conference on Monday, this proposed treaty could give political cover to these countries' disarmament efforts. Of course, there's no way to test that proposition, at least not until a final treaty has been approved. Rosalind Jordan, Al Jazeera, at the United Nations.